ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ವಾಯ್ ಡು ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಾಲಿಟಿ ಎಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ that all of us have asked at some point in our life and even after getting into some form of spirituality and even after having been on some kind of spiritual path is it not true that that question haunts us at times did i need all this at all could i not be like anybody else could i not just be in the materialistic world did i have to join this ashram or follow this guru or become a guru why did the all this happen oh we do get this doubt but with proper study and with proper guidance it will become extremely clear that spirituality is a must if someone has not understood what spirituality is and is simply doing some mumbo jumbo <laughs> then it is a different story when one gets a certain clear understanding of what spirituality is all about that question why spirituality goes out of the door out of the place never to return and another question comes in its place why did not i get into this much before why did i take so many years to get down to this exploration this quest this search oh i should have started much before why did i not do that that question will take the place of the previous question i mentioned do we need spirituality and so on in a sense the verses we are seeing 15 and 16 address that question though otherwise the connection was in the previous verse namely 14 it was said if we constantly think of god lovingly god is easy to get and there was a question raised oh he may be easy to get but by getting him get, getting him so what <laughs> and shankaracharya himself connected the two verses with that particular question to get god does a total change brings about the greatest benefit what is that big benefit of spirituality unless we get into true spirituality we are unstable we are getting disturbed every now and then now and then we may achieve we may steal limelight now and then we may become famous popular well received now and then we may be garlanded and for some people like us who become gurus now and then we have been so honored and pampered people saluting us falling at our feet and all that but all that is not peace many a times such things add to your misery <laughs> i won't tell more because other sadhus here will object later on Swami ji don't tell all our secrets to these people you sometimes go overboard in your confessions therefore restraining my own tongue 
I would say, unless we catch hold of that essential spirituality, even becoming sadhus or swamis and wearing this type of cloth and reciting some Sanskrit and bamboozling audiences, writing articles here and there, etc., etc. This world is full of all sorts of rewards, recognitions and all those do not meet, mean anything. Real spirituality you get, you don't have to be a Swami or Swamini, you don't have to be known in the society. Real spirituality is that which gives you an inner stability. You will take things in your stride. People may be unkind to you. You will not be much affected by it. You notice it. Mm. You become aware of it. But in a manner of saying, to put it in a bit of a poetic language, the flame of pure love in your bosom does not get put out, does not get extinguished. The flame of love, flame of compassion, the flame of caring for others and caring for you also in a deeper sense will keep burning brightly when you are into true spirituality, which alas, hardly anyone comes upon. No doubt, Narsi Mehta also wrote in that spirit, Vaishnava Janato Tene Kahiyeje, Piruparaye Janere, and so on. There is no mention of orange robes or yellow robes or green or blue or some other and some holding a staff and some particular kinds of all those, you know, externalities. In that famous poem of Narsi Mehta, which Mahatma Gandhi also loved so much, and because of Gandhiji, I think all of us, no matter from which state we are in India, we know that song now. You know, why did Gandhi love it so much? For Gandhi also saw spirituality essentially is these qualities. While other things like wearing a dress, some uni uniform, going to temples, going on pilgrimages, and so many achara, vichara, uh, so many gestures, conduct, etc. They have a place, but they do not constitute the essential spirituality. Therefore, here it is said, to reach Sri Krishna, which again symbolizes true spirituality, puts an end to suffering for all time. Unless you reach Sri Krishna, which we have several times interpreted as a state of being where the ego in you is at the back seat. It is our ego which gets hurt, which gets revengeful, which divides people, which goes after somebody, which sometimes takes sadistic position. That is, we derive pleasure in somebody suffering. Ego is terrible. Like Sri Krishna says about Kama in third chapter, it's terrible. When we are a slave to Kama, what are the words he uses? Mahashano Mahapapma. Kama, selfish desire, lust, etc., being one expression of it. Lust at the wrong place is one expression of that selfish desire. Otherwise, karma doesn't have to mean lust alone. It is all kinds of I, me and my and I have to have my way at any cost. Even if a hundred people die, who cares? I must get this piece of land. I must get that throne on my head. Not throne, no, crown on my head. I must sit on that throne, not anybody else. For that, I don't mind causing any amount of bloodshed. 
So whether it is land or wealth or money or woman or man, etc., etc., Sri Krishna warned us, Kama esha krodha esha rajoguna samudbhavaha mahashana Ashana means eating. It eats up all the virtue which otherwise was expressing in you. Karma arises and it gobbles all of that. The saint that you were till yesterday is such a wicked fellow today. Mahashano maha papma vidhi enam iha vairinam Know it to be the enemy here. Be very cautious. That can be said here too. What is said coming again and again to this birth, growing up, dying, birth, growing up, dying. As I referred to in the earlier lecture, in some religions perhaps that is what is referred to as going to hell. Hell is the domain of sad limitations. Heaven is the domain of basking in the sunshine of no limitations, that unbounded love, freedom and so on. Who doesn't want it? All of us actually want that kind of unburdened, unbridled, unbound, unbounded state of consciousness. At the bottom of our heart, all of us want to go back to our childhood. In Hindi they use a word bindas. <laughs> but as we grow up we lose that freedom. We are calculative, we are schematic. Everywhere we wonder what is there in it for me, this me and my. Therefore, Sri Krishna says to attain me has far-reaching significance. Those Mahatmas who attain me Attain samyak or sampurna siddhi. San siddhim paramam gataha <coughs> punar janma na apnuvanti. They don't get back to this limited domain. How wonderful. In that story that Plato had given. Oh. There is a cave and lot of people live under the cave. And they never knew that there is a world outside. They live in darkness. They live in fear. And one man somehow one day going here and there sees some crack, some light coming in and he explores, goes out. And then he comes back and tells, there is a world outside, let's all go out of this cave. Some of them were about to kill him. You. You are causing disorder and chaos here. We have been living peacefully here. <laughs> so when you disturb any system, that is the reaction you will get. Many saints were persecuted also for speaking the truth. So all religions, in their own way, using their own metaphors, talk about this. They may call it hell here and heaven there. Or they may call it Punar Janma here and not being born again, etc. Though in Bhakti Marga, say literally speaking, there are poems, some of you drew my attention to that after the class in the morning. There are many devotional poems where the devotee says, I don't ask for ending of rebirth. I'm ready to be born again and again. In fact, I want to be born again and again. Oh, Sri Krishna, bring me again and again. And what is more, even if you bring me back on this earth as an elephant, a goat, you know, a deer or a bird, I don't care. Bring me back. Only thing I ask of you is whether I am reborn as a bird or an animal or as a plant or as a human being. No matter what, please bless me with steady devotion to you. I want to be filled with devotion and wherever I am born, in whatever way, I want to be in the bliss of devotion to you and I want to share that with people. 
That is how in Bhakti Granthas it is said. But technically, when there is no desire for anything else, Shankaracharya would say, you may say you want to come back and you are ready to come back, but technically, scientifically, there is no need for the soul to come again. When you know there is no water in that mirage in the desert, which is an optic illusion, you may say, for the sake of saying, I know there is no water, but I don't mind walking some two miles more. But why will you walk? Why would you walk? If you really know there is no water, you would say, let's not go anymore in that direction. So Bhakti Shastra is very appealing, but logically it is not the final word. Therefore, Jnana Yoga. Therefore, Jnana Devatu Kaivalyam. Your freedom is through Jnana. Therefore, we named the upcoming ashram Jnana Shakti. The ability, the power, the strength that you will discover by right Jnana. Towards getting that right Jnana, can we have a place where we study Saha Viryam Karavavahai Saha Navavatu Ma Vidvishavahai <laughs> May we not develop some misunderstanding May we not fight with each other, that famous prayer from the Ajurveda. So with that, I already explained the 16th verse also, starting from Chaturmukha Brahma. By the way, Chaturmukha Brahma, even Shankaracharya says, who is Brahma? Uh, in fact, that meaning he gives in the next shloka, where the word appears with the same meaning, Brahma is Prajapati. In the works, Vedic works and Puranic works, there are several models. In one of the models, Chaturmukha, the four-faced Brahma sitting on a lotus, you know, holding Vedas in his hand, Japamala in another, there is some depiction. He is the creator. On behalf of the Supreme God, he is the officer in charge. And in some other models, there are not one, several Prajapatis, they create. So, these are different models and in Vedic vision we are not too attached to any single model. Just like we have many forms of God, Rama, Shiva, Krishna and so on. So, Brahma here, Brahma Bhuvana, Brahma Loka is the Loka of Chaturmukha Brahma. By the way, a child asked a question once. These children ask, you know, unusual questions. The child saw that um, Brahma sits on a lotus, not on a proper sofa, not on a proper, you know, bed, etc. Vishnu also sits on or lies on a serpent. Can't they go buy a proper bed from somewhere? And then he looked at, maybe ladies are more, you know, they are intelligent. He saw Sir Lakshmi, she is also standing on a lotus and uh, releasing gold coins from her hand. You know. Then uh, this Lakshmi, this Vishnu, this Brahma, etc., something wrong. Maybe Shiva, Shankara, she, the child saw some pictures of Shankara. He also doesn't use... Nowadays, very good beds are available. What is that? Curlon and sleep, sleep, uh, sleep well. So many brands. The child wondered, why is it no one uses any bed? And then they had a group discussion at 11.45, all children. They created a think tank. And then they came out not only with an answer, you know, but they, they wrote a Subhashita. Kamala Kamale Shete Harashete Himalaye. Uh, what is that? Harishete. Huh? Payonida also will do. Oh, that's right. Uh, she is Lord Vishnu, no doubt on Adishesha, but that Adishesha is on Milky Ocean. So Payonidi. 
Why is he on the milky ocean and then a serpent on which he is lying? Harishyate payo nidhau. So the children decide and then they conclude after 45 minutes of intense discussion in the Lonavala camp. The children's group, not these five people, Yudhishthira, Kula, Sahodeva, etc. There was a children's group. They, the last line is an excellent punch line. Prayo matkuna shankaya. Matkuna in Sanskrit means a bug. Bug. Beds, you know, will have bugs. When it is new, it may not be. But after some time, where the bugs come from? The bugs get into the beds and they bite you. So, Hari and Hara, Kamala is a Lakshmi. And then Hari is Vishnu, Hara is Shiva. Kamala, Kamale, Shete, Hara, Shete, Himalaye, Hari, Shete, Payo, Nidhau, Prayo, Matkuna, Shankaya. Most probably they are all afraid of bugs. Therefore, they take lotus, the milky ocean, the Himalayan snow. Bugs won't come in snow. So, in that way, coming back to, what are we studying? Ha, ah, Bhagavad Gita. Coming back to Chaturmuka Brahma. His loka is called Brahma Bhuvana. No matter where you go, how high you go, what laurels you win, Finally, Ghoom Firke, as they say in Hindi, after going round and round, being such a big celebrity, you are back to square one. You are in the domain of hunger and thirst, sorrow and delusion, old age and death, fear and desire. They don't leave you. Swami Chinmayananji used to wittily say, in this world, the poor suffer uncomfortably. They don't have a proper house and so on. The rich suffer comfortably. In nice air-conditioned houses with uh, wonderful curlon or sleep well beds and what not, you know. They too have their worries, right? The poor suffer uncomfortably and the rich suffer comfortably. So how do we how do we arrive at no more suffering? Maam Upetya. Realize Krishna. Hare Krishna organization would say, rise from your ego consciousness to Krishna consciousness. International Society for Krishna consciousness, ISKCON, has spread its wings all over the world. Very interesting. Therefore, Maam Upetya Punar Janmana Vidyate. Now, moving further and not really moving away from this central topic of what are we to do about the dying moment? What is our goal? Where should we arrive? Throwing more light on that state. Shri Krishna brings a fascinating dimension of this topic and that is time. In spirituality, in all mystic literature, nature of time is one of the advanced topics. If you know the illusion called time, then right away the illusion called ego also goes away. Therefore, someone like Jay Krishnamurti also would say, time, ego, and what is that third one? Thought. He refers to what is called psychological thought. Thought, self, and time are one. Where there is, he used the word self or ego. The moment your ego arises, there is, there is the sense of time. Time means not the clock time, that's why J. Krishnamurti uh, is not understood by a lot of people. He uses words and uh, many people wonder what is he saying. He clarifies, but not all people have the patience to study him. And then as though the difficulties in his uh, wonderful insights are not enough, 
he will left and right criticize guru and shastra and god and establish organized religions he'll criticize institutions he'll criticize schools he'll criticize social service organizations he'll criticize the so called it's also an institution right it's institution of marriage you know in some question answer session some couple asked him what is your advice to married people and he looked at them you are married what a pity <laughs> both with humor and you know really taking them to task or questioning that institution of marriage therefore orthodoxy keeps away from j krishna murti because in orthodoxy each ashrama varna varna each ashrama is glorified and the bright side is shown orthodoxy says to a grahastha grahastha ashrama is wonderful please celebrate serve the society being a grahastha and shows all the highlight no good side even the orthodoxy going further would you want praise you are a brahmana how nice brahmana should take less and give more brahmana should live a very simple life do you do 108 gayatri in the morning and evening being brahmana you don't oh no no start today so defining and describing some brahmana dharma you know it it doesn't sh- shake the foundations orthodoxy tries to therefore with all criticism coming towards them this or- orthodox mutts like shringeri or udupi and sri rangam and all those they continue to be custodians of some thousand year old practices for their own reasons god bless them we are not will not go more into it some other time we can what makes them stick to caste while the whole world walks away from birth based caste the shringeri and kanchi puri and dwarka jojo sharma etc they stick to birth is by or the caste is by birth so in various ways because orthodoxy tries to protect the institutions having said something about jay krishna murti jay krishna murti or for that matter the leftist thinking anywhere communist thinking marxist thinking leftist thinking they also mean well actually some of them are gems of people they are very well meaning and their heart actually you know suffered when they saw some injustice some exploitation you know uh, some high caste person is believing in a big mansion and a low caste person sometimes because of his caste only is again and again obstructed prevented from having some uh, his own land or his own you know house etc they see that and something disturbs them so much they throw everything and become communists leftists now without going long on that typically leftist i once asked somebody how do you define a leftist you know because in this india also now this left versus right has become at least i have become more perceptive of that there's a big battle mahabharata going on between left and right right so that gentleman who who has more experience in leftist thinking than i have said to me leftists have only one agenda i said what is that to topple any institution to topple any that's what he said you don't have to go by it <laughs> to topple organizations you know if they find in this country hinduism is pretty strong you know so topple it say this is caste based this is the women are not this is this they leave minorities a little away they will take on them later on you know but right now the majority which seems to enjoy a lot of privileges are hit hard by them they topple i said does it mean that they are not for congress and against bjp no 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 leftist thinking means if tomorrow congress comes to rule he said they will destabilize congress government also very interesting first you may say that is terrible in topple any institution but it's not with bad intentions their idea is power corrupts 
and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Moment an institution, school or marriage or this guru shishya is an institution, you know. Somebody says, I am a guru of that matha. Immediately the orthodox people say, oh really? Red carpet welcome is given. Somebody shows his sacred thread, I am a Brahmin. Oh, is that so? Oh, oh, okay, please take this seat. So, institution are uh, indeed vested interests. Just by a symbol, a sacred thread or by a card that shows him as Matadipati, right? So, there is that side. Anywhere something gets, uh, you know, uh, established, it leaves, it makes room for exploitation. So, they are partly right. There's nowadays I go on examining left and right, left <laughs> thinking and right thinking. And I, I try to look at both without a bias. I have many friends who are strong leftists, who are tremendously Muslim, Muslim, pro-Muslim, you know. Without mentioning name, I feel very tempted to give, give out my examples. Mohan and I had gone to one house in Mumbai uh, without any agenda of Hindu or Muslim, pro this or pro that. But that family gave us a good donation for our project and served us a wonderful delicious lunch also. But before letting us go, without mentioning RSS, they came down on the so-called Hindutva movement and they expressed without mentioning the word Muslim or Islam, they did. To me it was very clear. They expressed tremendous sympathy and compassion and whatever you call for the Muslims. It is true that a lot of Muslims are poor in this country, right? Poverty. They may have some violence, they may be sometimes doing something which causes, uh, you know, horror in others. But the fact remains that they are suffering a lot. So this party, you know, was, uh, it came, why do you want to make an ashram? They gave a donation, but they seem to be rather unhappy. All right, why did we go into all this? So, Krishnamurti, I said, time, thought, and self, ego. So, we are, we are going to look at time now. It will take some time, <laughs> but bear with me. Like Swami Hamsananji said, it is, we know it is time, you know it is time. One more bhajan. <laughs> so that last bhajan was so wonderful. You know, I don't think anybody regretted adding one more bhajan, shambo, bo shambo and all that. Anyway, so to wind up that reference to Krishnamurti, it's very thought-provoking. Where there is time, not clock time, clock will move whether you have uh, Samyak Darshana or you have no Darshana, clock will move. But if you have Samyak Darshana, if you have right seeing, uh, psychological time stops. Please feel free to ask a question on that after 25 minutes. I am going to conclude this lecture at 5 and leave 10 minutes for question and answer. Even if I am unable to cover half a shloka with before that, doesn't matter. I am going to touch upon the intricacies and mysteries of what is known as time to an extent possible, to the extent possible, and leave time for some question answer. So, uh, let me repeat what I said, which could be very hard for some of you to understand. In Samyak Darshana, you do not see yourself anymore as a, you know, um, you know, as belonging to some group or some this, some that. You don't think of yourself as this body at all, right? The state of no ego in the traditional Vedanta is time and again described as rising above Dehatma Bhava. Right. Dehatma Bhava is a very deep-rooted notion, I am this body. You know. And that entails a number of implications. 
moment I say, I am this body and I stand before a tall mirror, look at myself and then again come this way. That is when you come and I am tall, so short and you are tall. It bothers me. Why has God made him so tall and me short? Then I see you are fair and I am dark or other way around. Then I see that you have such a nice figure. Whereas I have become so obese or this or that. A number of, uh, you know, disturbances arise in the human mind with body identification. And what is this ego-free state? which I said is the inner meaning of Mamupetya. Reaching Krishna means reaching a state where you are aware you are short or tall, dark or fair, this or that, but it means nothing to you. It has its place. If you want to play basketball, it is good to be tall. But to, to an appreciate Carnatic music, you, know, you don't need a tall body. Sitting in a Carnatic or Hindustani music concert, Bete Hue, you don't say, May Amita Bachan ki tara tora cha fit do inch hota, to isi sangeet ko jada tar may appreciate kar pata. What has appreciating music got to do with Amitabh's height or Jaya Bachan's shortage or shortness? <laughs> English teachers are here among you. Shortness. Why if he's short, husband is tall. But when it comes to appreciating music, you know, it doesn't matter. Likewise, the ego-free consciousness, it's a really a state of tremendous intelligence. In its intelligence, it puts a hundred or a thousand factors or criteria to the side. Whereas in lack of intelligence, you know, even while watching a Bharatanatyam, I keep worrying, I should have done PhD, should not have stopped with MCOM. <laughs> what has this got to do with? In a state of inattention, in a state of confusion, in a state of ill-placed, misplaced identifications, the mind goes berserk and causes depression to us. Therefore, the statement, the self and time and thought are one. Let's leave thought. Self means ego consciousness and psychological time, not clock time, are one. Because when this is here, when this is present, that also will be present. When that is present, this also will be present. In Vedanta you have something called Anvaya Vetireka. Some of you have heard. Anvaya Vetireka means when A is somewhere, B also is present. And somewhere else you find A is absent, B also is absent. Then you suspect, we have never seen A separately. Jab bhi humne A dekha, B bhi tha. Aur jab bhi humne dekha ki A nahi hai, B bhi nahi tha. Did I say B bhi or B bhi? I hope I pronounced properly. As a madrasi, I should not speak much Hindi. But uh, that's a weakness with me. Uh, especially when I come to Bombay, Pune side. Even though I recognize there are many Mysore and Kannada people here, I go into. So let me say it once more. Whenever A was seen, B also was seen. Whenever B, A was not seen, B also was not seen. That's called Vyatireka. Anvaya means Hamesha wo saathi nazar aaye. Vyatireka means Hamesha wo saathi gum ho gaye, gaib ho gaye. Right? Like that, when you are in egoic consciousness, you have psychological time. I'm sure many of you want to know what is the psychological time. You said clock time goes on. Psychological time stops. Let me explain. And I can explain more in the QA, QA session. Psychological time is a sense of time that revolves around your wanting to become something 
यू आर बीइंग एंक्शियस अबाउट नॉट सक्सीडिंग इन दैट बिकमिंग यू आर सेइंग आई डोंट थिंक आई कैन रीच देयर इन दिस लाइफ टाइम यू नो सो इट इज एक्चुअली विदाउट यू आर नोटिसिंग प्रॉपरली समथिंग दैट रिवॉल्व अराउंड आई two students are writing the examination right three hours exam paper and both of them write a little look at the clock write a little look at the clock and both of them suppose the examination was 9 am to 12 noon as a lot of us have written enough exams even now for some of us in our dreams we find ourselves in exam hall and get panicky right so 9 am to 12 noon 3 hours paper and there are many questions to be answered and now it is 11:40 going by clock time for both the students you know 20 minutes remain but isn't it true that suppose these two are of different temperaments one of them no matter how less he has done so far maintains a certain inner calm takes note of 20 minutes remaining then takes a look at how much remains to be attempted and then takes a decision oh now there is only 20 minutes i don't think i should attempt that tough question which involves lot of working out let me do one of one or two two or three of the small questions har ek ka panch panch marks milenge you know and he goes about his work calmly the second student clock time is 20 minutes starts imagining i think i'm going to fail in this exam and if i fail in this exam i will not be able to show my face to my parents especially my father or especially my mother will talk very harsh words he will say or she will say in our family for generations nobody has done so badly like you have you are an unworthy offspring in this blah 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 and he imagines all that and looks at 20 minutes he also has 20 minutes the other boy also has 20 minutes but because of how i will make a cut a sorry figure of myself if i fail how i won't get that coveted seat in some you know professional course how i will feel so small before all my friends who would when the results come who would say they got 80 somebody got 75 somebody got 83 and i would have got only 54 or maybe 45 the ego in that student goes into full steam and there is so much of visualization so much of memories of the past last year when i failed <laughs> my father slapped me physical abuse which is an offense in many countries probably i don't know indian laws in some european western countries if a parent slaps the child neighbor can complain and police will come and take the father away so the memory of my being slapped my being told all unkind words memory memory and thought are very closely connected look at yourself and whenever a certain thought arises do a simple exercise ask yourself is this thought unrelated to any memory you will find 99 out of 100 thoughts are related to memory it is related to memory sometimes you may see i see an apple and i recognize it's an apple where does memory come very rarely it stops there within a couple of seconds looking at the you know apple some associated memories come yeah. i ate a li- apple like this once and or 
you know, anything, memories. When you give me an apple, let me confess. And you already cut it into five pieces, ten pieces. Swamiji, eat this apple. My memory goes to something like 2015, where my house owner in Himachal Pradesh brought a whole box full of uh, apples. He is an apple grower. Not in Solon, but up north further, Kinor. He gave and then he said, Guruji, ek baat kahu. Isko aise hi nahi khana. Always remove the full skin. Guruji, skin nahi khana. I said, really? And he said to me, I am an apple grown, grower. I know how much pesticide we pump on all these apples even as they are growing to prevent insects etc. from biting it. Therefore, because we love you, we have great regard for you Guruji, Chaku Lekar is kas, you know, kya bolte? Sikka? Chilka. Chilka. <laughs> Sikka means coin. Iska chilka hata dena, nikal dena. Tabbi fir kana. So when I go to home, some places they cut the apple already. And memory works instantly. I see apple here which is already cut into six pieces. I see my house owner, Ramesh Negi. Guruji, chilka hata ke hi khana. That's it. Sometimes I, you know, Ram Bharose, I just take it. My hosts have given with so much love. You know, I said, Aaj kuch nahi hoga. Mang budwar hai na. But, really speaking, so that's a challenge to you. Next time a certain thought is in motion, it may be a good thought or bad thought, lusty thought or a noble, generous thought, just ask, has this thought which is operating in me at this moment, any connection with memories, with the past, you will be surprised. 99 out of 100 times, it is rooted in some past memory. What about that 1 out of 100? That 1 out of 100 is harmless. Bandhana, bondage takes place when we fall a victim to memories. Therefore, memory, thought, time, past, present and past, right? Time. And the operation of the ego, operation of the self, are all one whole. At a given point of time, we may see one say, face and not notice or not be aware that other faces are very much there. Anvaya, they all go together. Thought, self and time rise together. Thought, self and time subside together. Not only J. Krishnamurti, Maharshi Ramana has extensively talked about it. Therefore, my entry to Krishnamurti was thanks to Ramana only. What Ramana had said, I found being elaborated in a certain way by Krishnamurti. Whatever Krishnamurti says in the printed books going to ten pages, looked like a commentary on one statement in Saddarshanam. Yeah. Thought, mind and world rise together, mind and world subside together, etc. He says, Dhyā saho deti, dhyā astameti, dhi and loka. Dhi is thought, the dhyo yona prachodayat, loka is world. In that light, let us enter this loka, the two verses are mind-blowing. I wish I had that book by Osho, Rajneesh, by my side now. Somewhere in 1990, Osho's commentary on 8th chapter in Hindi. My Hindi was very weak that time. Still, I was able to read slowly. Osho's commentary on 8th chapter of Gita in Hindi somehow came to my hands. I had to give some lectures on 8th chapter in V.V. Puram in Bangalore. I said, no, because we always look for some material, especially when we are novices, brahmacharis, not having given much lectures. 
Later on, we always have so much memory of lot of jokes and examples, stories, and lot of tricks and skills and and some common sense too. Sometimes common sense takes a back seat. Skills come to the front. I tell you that I wish I could take a second look. At least that time, I was flabbergasted by the insights that Osho came out with on these two shlokas. He even drew from Einstein the latest discoveries of physics, what physics says about time, what is the relativity, you know, time is relative, space is relative, as per Einstein, and what we mean when we say time and space are unreal in the Vedanta. So, excellent. I'm not sure whether I would be equally excited now, because in 89 or 90, I did not have much insights. So, whatever I read was so new. Ooh, I said. <laughs> now, probably, having studied Ramana, having studied Krishnamurti, having studied a whole lot of good things as well as not good things, all kinds of, you know, I'm like a goat. We have a saying in Kannada, Adu Tinnada Gida Illa or something. Is that so how you put it? Ah, thank you. The exact expression is Adu Muttada Sopilla. There is no plant which a goat would not touch. Any plant, it will go and bite the leaves. It eats all leaves of all plants in the, you know, in the courtyard. So some of us like, you know, like me, not fully, but to an extent, you give me any book. I say, this is very interesting. This, this is the kind of books I always like to read. I t and not only I say, but I, that night I'll read it. For two or three days, no, I don't touch Bhub, Gita or Upanishad. Gita or Upanishad to are there always, okay, but this is, you know, how to be happy in three minutes. Or all those, you know, self-help books especially, you know. So I read. And slowly some vairagya is coming these days. Over the years I found that those self-help books only help me lecture. I am not sure whether they really changed me. Let's see. So are we starting the shloka? <laughs> I know it is time, you know it is time. So let us go for the <laughs> Sahasra Yuga Pariyantam Ahar Yad Brahmano Viduhu Ratrim Yuga Sahasrantam Deho Ratra Vido Janah Sahasra Yuga Pariyantam Avyaktad Vyaktaya Sarvah Prabhavantya Haragame Ratragame Praliyante Tatraiva Vyakta Sanyake Avyaktad Yes, the topic goes into three verses, 17, 18 and 19 also, but the light on the relative nature of time. Time is not absolute. The relative nature of time is explicitly given in this 18th verse, or 17th, the first of the three, 17, 18, 19. How? This is not a book of physics. Therefore, the language is not 
like how science goes about things. It's a bit poetic. It's the mystical language. But amazingly, with a little of receptiveness, with a little of faith, anybody would see that this is no different from Einstein saying in a different way, time is relative. If you were to be on board a special plane which goes at very high speed, at speeds closer to that of light, Einstein gave the view that it is impossible for anything to travel faster than light. That's another statement that he has given his own logic. If, light, if anything were to travel faster than light, you will be able to go back in time. From 2nd March, you can go back to 1st March. That is not possible. And connecting all that, he made that statement too. Nothing can travel faster than light, simply impossible. But before that, if you were to go on a plane, imagine, at speeds closer to that of light, you know, 180, 180 or 186,000 miles per second, so, or 3 into 10 to the power 10 or something, meters per second. That's, that's a very huge figure, right? So it doesn't have to be equal, even half the speed of light, or 40% the speed of light, or even 20% of the speed of light, which is also a lot. If your speed is somewhat comparable with that of light, time slows down. If you are wearing a clock, and somebody on the ground also was wearing a clock, you go on a trip and come back, your time would have gone, let's say, 10 minutes further, his watch, both the watches were showing same time before, but this watch would have shown two hours. Two hours have passed. Mind-blowing, but it has a lot of logic and it's not really too difficult if you carefully understand. Therefore, it is called theory of relativity. Just as, you know, you are sitting on a train and uh, you find another train is also next to you. You for a moment think that that is not moving at all. Then you feel, then you find out that it's moving at high speed. How come it seemed to be stationary? You also were moving at high speed. If train A and train B are both moving at the very high speed in the same direction, people in train A would think people, the train B is stationary, not moving. People in train B would imagine train A is stationary. It's not. So there are umpteen examples of how relative motion and actual motion are different. So time seems to flow steadily, uniformly and in a you know, certain strict, you know, well-fixed manner. But Einstein showed that it is not so. So, time is relative. Time slows down, time speeds up, etc., etc. When does it speed up? I guess you are moving at 20% of the speed of light and then you suddenly change your speed to 10%. Then time will speed up. Then you come to the, you know, no movement, stationary on the earth. Then that will be the time of the other fellow. The other fellow was stationary, so time flowed like it flows for all of us. Moment the second fellow took off at very high speed, his clock, it's not an illusion. <laughs> you and I, when we studied relativity, would think maybe Einstein talked about optic illusion. No, 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 no. Actually, time slows down. So I think there is neither the need nor am I equipped enough to go into more detail. I can attempt it if I get some time and again brush up my physics. But here, Sri Krishna says something which is mind-boggling. Like I said, two brothers, that's how that Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan or somebody, he made some science fiction documentaries those days in which he shows two brothers, Siamese twins. He puts them as the Siamese twins. 
It doesn't have to be twins, doesn't have to be Siamese twins, but that's an idiomatic expression of some two twins, boys, who look alike. All right. One of them boards a plane and goes on a merry-go-round, goes round, goes. The second one, meanwhile, wonders, where has this brother gone? And then after some time, he has better things to do than wait for his brother. He says, God bless him. And he goes about his work. He, when they left, you know, when this brother left in Carl Sagan's depiction of that, that comes very close to what we are going to see in the Gita. When the, one, one of the Siamese twins left on that aircraft, in the science fiction, actually nobody has made such an aircraft now. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's more than fiction though. Let's say both of them were 10 year old. This fellow goes at high speed, 80% as much of speed of light and goes and is not visible anymore. The other fellow on the earth, you know, continues with his studies, goes to college, gets a job, marries, has children and he is now 32 years with two tiny toddlers whom he calls children and had almost forgotten his brother who had gone on that aircraft. Then one fine morning something is coming in this space. He, his wife and children say, what is coming there? Carl Sagan, it might be on YouTube, I also wish to, wish to see it, revisit it. I had seen it in 1981 when I was in Madras, Chennai. It was shown you know, on some occasion, very, very gripping. These fellows see, husband, wife and children, they are coming. Then they say, Arey, ye to, bhai wapas a hai. It comes back. And hmm, spaceship or something, you know, it lands. And this 10 year old brother who left, how many years did I say? 32 this fellow is. So in Earth's, Earth's 22 years that have passed, this fellow went on a tour, right? But because all the time he was on that vehicle which was going at 80% uh, of speed of light at that velocity his clock had slowed down it's not just the clock everything <coughs> the cell brain cells other cells this all of them would slow down in fact i'm already i think making an error they don't slow down time applicable to them has slowed down or in other words, for that fellow who went like that, only one year had passed. For this fellow, they are Siamese twins. This fellow, 22 years had passed. So here comes my brother, after 22 years, let us welcome him. But when the brother gets down from the aircraft, how would, how would he look? 11 year old boy. He says, Bhaiya, kaise ho? Anna, chana ki diya. Bhaiya, kaise ho bol raha hai? Is this my brother? He recognizes. How come he is only something like 11 years old? I became 32 year old. Baal bache ho gaye. You know. That is how Carl Sagan shows Einsteinian principles in number of you know, wonderfully made science fiction movies, Sri Krishna says, that is the scenario. One day, ahaha, sahasra yuga pariyantam, ahar, ahar or ahaha means daytime, sunrise to sunset, or take it 12 hours and 12 hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Then 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. is Ratrihi. He says, one day of Brahma is equal to 1000 Yugas. While I enjoy reading so many books, one thing I don't enjoy is trying to remember how many years a Yuga is. Even now I do not know. Some notes such Tippanis give. This book is not giving. One yuga is some many, many, many thousands of years, right? So, which is not very important here, the figures. 
But the teaching is a day, 12 hours of Brahma is equal to thousands of years of us on the earth. Similarly, one night, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. of Brahma, that Chaturmukha Brahma, what about the non-dual Advaita Brahma? It has no time at all. It is untouched by time. So, usko hum rane dete hain. Let's leave him in peace. <laughs> this Chaturmukha Brahma is one who has time. But Chaturmukha Brahma's uh, half, a, half one, four, 12 hours day is thousands of years of you and me. Chaturmukha Brahma's night is equal to thousands of years of you and me. I don't know how many people reading Bhagavad Gita would make head or tail of this. They would read it, enjoy the poetry, and as a part of our mind says, did you understand it? They will say, Krishna Arpanamastu. What Krishna has said, let us offer to Krishna only. Tumi ne kaha or tumi sambhalo. <laughs> Your problem, Sri Krishna, uh, we are happy whatever we are. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya.